My name is Richard Rowley and I'm here in Roswell today. It's the 16th of October 2009 and we're going to do an oral history for James Bruin who's been a longtime practitioner <laughs> here in Roswell. Jim, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, thank you. Well, you look good. Well, thank you. You look I, good. I feel good, except for a few aches and pains. Well, that kind of comes with the territory. I think so. I think so. so, I think so, <laughs> so yeah. uh, tell me, Jim, have you lived in Roswell all your life, or did you come from somewhere else? I always say, not yet. It's the way I answer that, okay. not yet. Not. I was born in Joplin, Missouri in 1926. And we moved out here in 1930 uh, with my mother and father and the older sister. So I've been here since 1930 in Roswell. So you're considered a native for sure, uh, then? Semi native, yeah. Uh, did you, and I assume then you attended school here in Roswell through grade school, high school? Mm hmm, right. And where did you go to college? University of Colorado at Boulder. Colorado. And is that where you got your undergraduate degree? Mm -hmm. What kind of a degree did you get there, Jim? Well, in those days, to go to law school, you didn't, they didn't have to have a degree. So I went uh, two years to arts and one year to business and then three years to law and I got two degrees, BS in business and LLB in law. Uh, going that route. So you got your law degree from University of Colorado mm -hmm. also? Yes. And that would have been in what year? 1952. Were you single or married at that point? Oh, I was single. Well, I'd met my 2B wife. She was a United Airlines stewardess and she had gone to university but I didn't know her there but I met her through a mutual friend uh, in Denver. Uh, and I, we got married shortly after graduating. What prompted you to go to law school? Well, you know, a lot of things you, you think you remember, but you're not sure. <laughs> but I had an older sister that uh, was one of the three secretaries, legal secretaries for the Atwood Malone law firm, Colonel Atwood and Ross Malone. And uh, when I got through school in the afternoon, I'd walk down to her office and uh, then I'd get a ride home. So I think that contact, I just teen a young teenager, early teenager, I, that I've always said was what kind of prompted me to want to be a lawyer and I never changed my mind. Did you have any lawyers in your family? No, no. Okay, so. Matter of fact, I was the first to go to college. Now, were you, were you in the military? A couple of years. I uh, graduated from high school in 1944, and I had enlisted in the U.S. Army Air Corps when I was 17. So I got to finish high school, and then I went in uh, a month or about, I think, June of 1944. I was in for two years. Where were you stationed during that? Oh, time? gosh, about six different places all in the U.S. Uh, I never... We didn't get to go overseas. We were about ready to go overseas when they dropped the bombs on Japan. So that ended that, but uh, I was a right size, right side gunner on a B-29. Oh, okay. We, no. we, had, we had a crew. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cause you you we, weren't ever in Clovis, I guess. I know there were B-29s no, I was in, in Am I was in Amarillo and uh, <clears throat> Lincoln in Denver, and uh, uh, Tucson, Fort Myers, Florida, about six different places. So after you got out of the military then, is that when you then went on to college? Yeah, I got out like in August and went to college in September. <laughs> then when you got out of college, I got out of law school, did you come right back to Roswell? Was that well, I got married and uh, we you know, honeymooned, etc. Did a little bit of moving around. But uh, then I came back to Roswell and joined up with Truman Sanders, who was, uh, who'd been here probably mm, six or eight years, older fella, not, uh, not at that time real old, but I joined him as an associate. 
Now, when you went to work with Truman Sanders, was it just the two of you in the firm? Right. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. And then, I know over a period of time, the firm has grown. I don't even know whether you mm-hmm. know how many people you've got in this firm today. That uh, well, you're if I, if you let me use my fingers, I can figure out. I think we have twelve who actually practice, and then Chuck Call is uh, of counsel. And I'm re- retired, have been for several years. So I think we have 14, counting the two of us. Now, was was Bobby Baldock in your firm for a period of time? He was. <clears throat> Bob came with us uh, in 1962 or 63, and then he got appointed to the federal bench by President Reagan in 1982, I think it was. And so he left the firm. And then Chuck Call, who's still with us, he came in about 1974. And then uh, from there, uh, Mike Worley in early 80s, and I couldn't tell you when each one of them came with us, but uh, we we just hired two this year. What? Did you have your practice? Did you concentrate in any particular area or areas of practice? No, you? in a in a town our size, you did just a little bit of everything. Um, didn't do a lot of trial work, uh, some, and uh, we did some insurance defense work and divorces and wills and trusts and uh, ended up doing quite a bit of foreclosure work after the base closed in 60, 1966, I think it was, we had an awful lot of foreclosures. No, that's when Walker Air Force Base Yeah, started. yeah, Walker Air Force Base. Okay, mm-hmm. okay. Did you, and, and I'm kind of working off of my memory because you and I have known each other for mm-hmm. a good number of years. Weren't you in the legislature for a period of time? Yes, uh, I was in the state senate from 1967 through... 1972. Five years of it. Six, I think. Six years? Mm -hmm. Is that about all you could stand? (laughs) Well, uh, they they redistricted my district, and I had run originally in the northern half of Chavez County. And then in about 70, I think, or 71, my district was put into with all of Roosevelt County. So I had to run in Roosevelt County and by a little part of uh, Chavez County. And I uh, was defeated by a Democrat, uh, Wood, Bill, his name was Wood. He was a banker in uh, Portales. And he had ended my career through 1972. I was out at the end of 1972. Do you miss that at all? Oh. It was a good experience. It was a very good experience. Um, I, I uh, am amazed at the amount of time and work that the current senators and representatives do compared to our time. Uh, we just met the 30 days uh, odd years, I guess, or even, and 60 in the other. Uh, very, very rarely, and I don't recall hardly ever having to go any other time for a committee meeting or whatever, and we got a per diem of $20 a day, and, uh, you know, we... That that got you by in Santa Fe? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in those days, the uh, the lobbyists, they take us out practically every night for dinner, and uh, had an apartment, my wife came up some, and uh, so, but now those guys, you know, they have committee meetings all the time and special sessions. I don't recall ever having a special session, but uh, it was pretty laid back in, in my time. So you could continue with your law practice without any problem back when you were in the legislature? Yeah, the, uh, we usually, for the first, oh, three, four or five weeks, we would adjourn around noon on Thursday, and I'd come home, work Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then drive back Sunday afternoon, 
and keep up relatively well with the business. We had, uh, uh, well, let's see, yeah, we didn't have, yeah, we had Baldock in those days. So we had a two here that took care of the anything I couldn't get around to, but uh, we, I kept up pretty well. Well, that's good. Mm-hmm. I, must have been a good experience. I, you know, I'm not sure how $20 a day would <laughs> do much for you. <laughs> well, I think they get now 100 and some odd, whatever the IRS allows for for uh, the deductible expense account. Right. But, uh, yeah, you know, it. Uh, I, I didn't starve, you know. And we always, always had something to do. Well, that's good. And, of course, you had partners that could kind of oh, yeah. carry on for you while you were gone. And we get, we had an apartment. I think that cost $130 a month, which was practically <laughs> nothing now. But uh, it... Uh, I didn't spend a lot of my own money. Now, I know, uh, you know, back years ago when you and I were on the Board of Bar Commissioners together and you were on the Board of Bar Commissioners for a number of years, do you recall how many years you were on that board? Well, I was a commissioner from this district for six years, and then I was the senior lawyer division representative for two years. So I, it, all together, it was eight years. Well, I know that uh, that, weren't you there? Were you there when all the work was going on trying to build the new bar center? And, and that was No, <clears throat> that was later. The bar center was later. Okay, yeah. okay. Well, I knew that you were on the Board of Bar Commissioners the same time I was, which had been a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, uh, what kind of an experience was that for you? Another good experience. Uh, I really enjoyed that. Um, we had a great bunch of people to work with, both men and women. We had we had good leadership in the executive, and uh, I think we did some worthwhile things. The uh, the bar center was. Do you know? Do you remember when the bar center was built? I can't remember. It seemed like. Um, Seemed like I remember going to some meetings there, it, but I don't remember. I'm I'm thinking that it was along in the late '80s, maybe something mm-hmm. like that, when that bar center was built, and and that's mm-hmm. uh, just kind of working off of memory, which yeah. And I don't remember the years that I, I was on the bar, but we must have uh, must have been built during some of that time because I do remember meeting in the bar center. Right, right. Well, I uh, uh, I know it was a real pleasure for me to have you with, on the board of bar commissioners because everybody kind of looked up to you like the the sage with all the sound <laughs> advice and. When everything, anything came up, I know the comments used to be, and you probably weren't within earshot. But well, let's find out what Jim Bruin thinks because <laughs> he'll have a he'll have a good idea, and, and and we know he won't get carried away. And yeah, well, that, that's a nice compliment. I guess I probably was the oldest at that time. I think you were, mm-hmm. and and I always wondered why you didn't try to progress through the chairs. And well, and you know, I've 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 regretted that I didn't. But during that time, I just wasn't ready to make the commitment to be the president. And I should have, because I was age-wise and time-wise, uh, could have made it. I think you but I a just, shoe. I just didn't uh, opt to do it. I and think you would have been a shoe in. Well, I, uh, I probably, and I would have enjoyed it, yeah. because I enjoyed the bar work. Now, have you? Uh, uh, what do you? When did when did you actually officially retire? Are you actually officially retired? Now? Yes, after fifty years, I retired uh, in o three, two thousand and three, uh, and felt like that was plenty of plenty of practice time. I still have an office, and I have a secretary, and I I come in an hour or so a day, and don't don't do any legal work. But uh, I can just kind of keep up with the, the younger people. And uh, occasionally, some of them even ask me a question. Well, that's good. And I make up an answer for them. Well, <laughs> are, are, well are you actually, are you inactive now? Or have you just, I'm, yeah, I'm, I took inactive status as a lawyer. So huh? you don't have to keep up with the continuing education. No, that so. was, I was kind of glad to get that <clears throat> over with. Tell me, Jim, what, when, when you talk about all the years you practiced law, 50 years, 
can you tell me one or two instances of things that you got involved in that were really uh, things that you think about from time to time that uh, either cases you were involved in or situations you were involved in that that really uh, uh, demanded your attention or that you thought maybe where you made some kind of a significant contribution to the, either your community or yeah I'd be I'd be hard pressed to come up with anything I, I do remember we were having a, a state bar meeting here the uh, day that uh, President Kennedy was shot because I'd been at the meeting and I went back to my office and t by the time I got back to the meeting, why well, the news was out that he'd been shot. But I do, and when I started, and this has probably been true later on, each lawyer uh, was assigned on a rotating basis to a defendant that couldn't pay. And I remember I had a couple of jury cases, and I remember one very distinctly this kid had been charged with breaking in to a house that was owned by people that I'd known for a long, long time. The jury found him guilty, and as we stood up to leave, he says, well, I guess we'll have to throw a writ of habeas corpus at him. <laughs> I had to stop and think, now, let's see what that is, <laughs> you know. But, oh, we, I remember a case we had where... Um, we represented a young fellow that had been hit with a golf ball by a fellow that was behind him. And uh, Ross Malone, the famous Ross Malone, was on the other side. Truman Sanders and I represented the young man. And uh, wasn't a very significant judgment, but we got about $10,000. And the kid did got through life pretty good. But uh, oh, a few like that, I think I remember one where, uh, you know, nowadays people would get these huge judgments and they usually have them on a contingent fee basis. The, well, the daughter of a friend of mine was killed in a commercial airline crash. And uh, they didn't think about uh, filing a suit until almost the statute of limitations had run. Well, we were able to get the suit filed, and uh, actually I think we filed it in California. And uh, the airline paid about half a million dollars, and instead of a contingent fee, I think I charged on a time basis maybe 1500 or 2000 which has been quite below a, a c contingent fee basis. but. Uh, Oh, you know, through through the years, uh, we've had cases, but most of my practice was more office and that sort of thing instead of the trial work. Transaction. Bald, Baldock uh, was a good trial lawyer, and he liked trial work, so he kind of took over more yeah, so I, than I. I I've, I've <laughs> had some experiences with Bobby Baldock back many years ago, and, mm -hmm. and he was uh, a lot of fun to try a case with. Yeah, well, he's as you know, he's now... A, Federal Circuit Court judge, so he got up pretty high and uh, doing a wonderful job. Lives still lives here in Roswell. I thought he maintained an office mm -hmm. here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, if you if you got somebody a half a million dollar uh, recovery <laughs> and charge fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars, any plaintiff's lawyer today I heard about that they they'd think you'd lost your mind. Well, they'd probably uh, kick me out. <laughs> well, I remember. Well, in our case, but a guy down in Hobbs uh, got a, a verdict for $150,000. And the, the defendant was drunk, driving and killed somebody. I can't remember the exact facts. But everybody thought he was a hero to get a $150,000 judgment. So, uh, you know, times change. Times have changed. I do remember, too, we got a very substantial fee one time when we had a probate that was about four million dollars but uh, that was probably the highest fee I remember getting well that's uh, it sounds like you've had a lot of diverse experiences yeah. and you've handled the things in a lot of different areas of the law mm -hmm. that's true that's did you true. do a lot of real estate work from here yes down here? real estate we represented uh, a couple of title companies and uh, represented a savings and loan Pioneer Bank, 
Pioneer Savings and Trust, I think it was in those days. Now it's Pioneer Bank and another bank. So uh, we've had, I've had a pretty general uh, business. Well, you you would have then, you're, you're of the age where you would have examined abstracts. Back oh, then. yeah, uh, a ton of them. Ton and, of them. you know, uh, of course, I've done a lot of that. My dad did that and mm-hmm. so on. But the the title insurance thing sure changed oh, things yeah. in that area. It took yeah. that part of the practice away. Well, we still had abstracts on ranches and farms. Uh, sometimes they had title insurance, but the ranches particularly... Uh, we had abstracts. Uh, I didn't do hardly any oil and gas work, but they had abstracts for those. Well, that's true because I know the title policies won't tell you anything about what minerals you own. Yeah. And the only way you're going to find out is with an abstract. That's true. That's true. Uh, you don't do any of that kind of work anymore? No, no. Actually, the that, that work sort of quit several years ago because the title companies quit using lawyers, at least here, and they just basically did their own title work and wrote a title policy, and that was it. Did you enjoy doing that kind of work? I did, I did. It was interesting to see some of the old titles and who owned the house and so forth. You get to see a lot of history with that. Oh, yeah, yeah, an awful lot. That's, that's, uh, uh, well, tell me, what do you do to kind of occupy your time now that you're quote unquote retired <laughs> good question <clears throat> uh, well I'm I'm active as a director of the Roswell Symphony Orchestra that takes a little time uh, oh gosh uh, as I, sh- I should exercise but I think about I think about exercising <laughs> a lot but uh, I have a nice dog that I walk a couple of times every so often. But uh, I know your wife Alice passed away. Yeah, some she time passed ago. away. Passed away about two years ago, and that quite a change it, for me. That was a sad but, event. She was a she was a classy lady. Well, I always thought thank a lot you, about Alice, you. and I know my wife did. Do you, do you have kids? I have a son that lives in Denver, and a daughter that lives in Albuquerque both single, so I don't have any grandkids, and uh, I really, you know, at the time I, well, I, I do a little paperwork trying to get my estate in, in order in case I should go on ahead, and the kids won't have much to worry about. I spend a lot of time, seem like, doing that. I always say I don't I do not do anything, and I can't get that done, so, you know. <laughs> are varies. either one of your, any one of your kids lawyers? Our daughter went to the UNM Law School, and uh, she practiced about one year in Washington, D.C., and she's worked in, uh, in government mainly. She worked for uh, Manuel Lujan when he was in the Congress on his committees. She worked with the... Uh, U.S. Attorney General, in his, is that the correct name, in D.C. Mm-hmm. She was there, and then she was uh, Executive Director of the Public Utilities Commission in Pennsylvania for about five years. And she just kind of, a lot of pressure, so she moved back to Albuquerque about six years ago. And she's, she doesn't practice. She keeps, she's taken inactive status, too. Our son works for the Department of Labor in Denver in the mine safety and health. So, uh, that, and like I say, they're both single. So they, uh, they, we won't be having any grandchildren. Well, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's too bad, but you know, that's, uh, uh, it sounds to me like you've stayed pretty busy. I've always wondered, I want to ask you about the Roswell Symphony. How in the world does Roswell end up with the symphony orchestra? Now, if you're on their board, you ought to be able to tell. Hard me. work, hard work. Uh, this is the 50th anniversary of the symphony, started by the uh, choir director of the First Methodist Church in the basement of the church is when they first got their orchestra together, and their first concert was like December of 59, and uh, the musicians are mainly from out of town. We have excellent musicians. We've had four conductors, and it's it uh, it's just kept going. 
Uh, we, we've had some tough financial times, and right now is a tough time because uh, some of the money we got was through the New Mexico Hearts, and with the, uh, the uh, income for the state being way down, why that didn't come through this year. So we've had raffles and, you know, raffled off cars and cash and so forth. We've had, uh, we've had the same conductor now for 30, 36 years. And he also conducts the Bakersfield, California Symphony. So, uh, so what does he do? Shuttle back and yes, forth? Yes, he comes here six times a year. Comes in like Tuesday, and then they rehearse, and then they play usually Saturday night or Sunday afternoon. And he's been excellent for us. We've uh, so he just rehearses them two, for three, about two or three times two, before uh, each concert. Two, yeah, these are professional people. Well, they're college uh, professors and. Uh, you know, some come over from the Lubbock Symphony and some from the Albuquerque Symphony in eastern New Mexico. So uh, we have, I can think of two local musicians that have been with us for a long time. They're from here. And one interesting thing, one of the, uh, we had a young man that was in the eighth grade when the symphony started, played the violin, and he's still with the orchestra. He's still, That's he's amazing. Played, yeah, so he's been here 50, all 50 years. He'll be ready to retire before. Well, he, <laughs> he actually lives in Hereford, but he, he comes over every time. I think good. that's a fantastic. I, you know, it just amazes me because I've always thought that putting something like that together and keeping it together where you've got mm -hmm. that many people involved and especially you've got musicians from coming to all different places mm -hmm. would be such a, nightmare of a job just kind of getting your arms around it yeah. and being well, able to keep it together. We've had good executive directors that work full time. Of course the board has the overall supervision but we've had some very good executives that uh, do do all the lining up of the uh, music and the musicians and all that sort of thing. So, And and the conductor of course he selects uh, selections and so forth. But it's a uh, it, it runs pretty smooth. We we could use two, three hundred more people come to the concerts. But uh, matter of fact, we're having. You ever heard of Michael Martin Murphy? Oh yeah. He came last year, and he's coming again this year. And uh, that really packs them in. They buy single tickets for that. So yeah. he's an excellent entertainer. He is. I've yeah. seen him before, and he mm -hmm. uh, uh, he he's he puts on quite a show. Yeah, and we've had we've had some very good, uh, very outstanding uh, soloist guest artists that uh, have really been good. Well, I know. I every now and then I'll see something in a in the newspaper or something that advertises a concert that you've got coming up and I've mm. always been impressed that it looks to me like you really have good quality programs that, yes, we that, do. that yeah. require top-notch musicians to mm. pull it off. Yeah. And, and I, well, 50 years, you know, that I don't know where the last 50 years have gone, but uh, I haven't been on the board that long, but I have been on the board quite a while. Quite a while. And my wife Alice had been on, and we had what they call the uh, Symphony Guild, which are the women that, and they do a lot of work too. They put out two cookbooks, uh, so I forget them, Symphony something, uh, that have been made some money for us, and uh, it's publicity. So there's a lot of people that have spent a lot of time keeping it together. Well, you know, for a community the size of Roswell, Mm -hmm. uh, I think you ought to be real proud that uh, you yeah. could pull that off and keep it going. Yeah. And, and, uh, well, it's you know it's it's been a labor of love. Let's say I've I've enjoyed it and I enjoy the uh, the symphony music. I also like Dixieland, but uh, you know, right? I, you can tell I'm not a long-haired musician, but uh, <laughs> but no. I, I enjoy it. It's well, that's good. good. That's good. Do you play any musical instruments? Yourself? Oh, when I was in. Uh, about the eighth grade, I played the trumpet, but not very well, and I gave that up. You know. Okay, 
Well, uh, you, now you said you come into the office here basically every day or a couple of times, three times a week. How, what, now, every day, I usually, I guess I have this dog, and I come down here with him, read, check the mail, see if I have any phone calls, just kind of walk around and say hello to everybody. Then the dog, there's two or three of the girls that keep bones for him, and of course it's a treat. It's a treat for him to to come down. So uh, that's about the extent of it. I, I'm here probably an hour, maybe. Let me ask you this: What? And I know since you've practiced for 50 years before you retired that you saw a lot of different changes in how law was practiced back from the early t- to stages of your career up to the latter stage of your career and what mm-hmm. you even observe today. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you think, what do you notice the biggest changes and do you think they've been for the better or for the worse? Mm. Well, that, that's, that'd be really kind of hard to answer, but when I came, when I started here in Roswell, I think we had about 15 <laughs> lawyers. And now we must have 105, 110. There was probably mm, maybe 2,000 in the state or 1,000. Now we've got 6,500. Uh, it's, it's gotten to be more like a business than it used to be. Uh, I got in it because I liked helping people. And like I say, we uh, nowadays uh, uh, you've got all these big jury verdicts of multi-million dollars, 44 million just the other day in Albuquerque. And I think it's a cutthroat's not a nice word, but there's so many lawyers. I think it's it's much less uh, compatible between lawyers than it used to be. You knew you used to know every lawyer by name and knew his wife and kids and saw them all the time, but uh, now uh, I, I don't know all the lawyers in Roswell. A lot of them are public defenders, district attorneys, assistants, and so forth. But I just think that the magnitude of it has grown quite a bit, and uh, it's, it's strictly a, a business. Uh, people just charge more and get more, and that, that's I don't object to that. Right. But it, it really has kind of taken the personalities out of the business to a certain extent. Well, you know, it seemed to me that, you know, when you're practicing law and you knew the lawyers, you could get on the telephone and agree on something and you didn't mm-hmm. worry about mm-hmm. somebody misinterpreting or maybe mm-hmm. not remembering just exactly. Yeah. But yeah. It, it, it seems to me that in this day and age, and maybe it's because you don't know the people as well, but you, you just can't rely on the old handshake or, yeah, I'll do this over the telephone yeah, that's, know, like you used to. That's very definitely part of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you've practiced quite a long while. How long have you practiced? Uh, well, this is for 46 years for yeah, me. Well, so, you know, that's, you've got a few we're more. all getting a little longer in the tooth, as <laughs> I like to say. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> uh, do you fool with the computers at all? Well, I wish you hadn't asked me that. <laughs> I don't know how to use the computer. As a matter of fact, I used to be a pretty good typist. I don't think now that I can type because I've had a secretary for 50 years plus, and uh, I've been thinking about trying to find me a, a typing refresher book of some kind, <laughs> see if I can get back to typing. We have a computer at home, and of course, many of them here in the office, but. Uh, I don't. I don't use the computer. You don't email with your kids or anything. No, no. I have the secretary. Alice did when she was living, and my secretary. I use her email, and people email me through her. But and our daughter has it. Well, the son and daughter both are very good with the computers. But I just, I've not gotten into that. No, don't tell anybody. No, no I, I wouldn't breathe this I word to a soul. Yeah, it. I appreciate that. Uh, let me ask you this, Jim. What, you know, like you've talked, the practice of law has changed a lot over the years. Uh, you know, if some young person came to you today and said, Mr. Bruin, you think maybe law school would be something I ought to consider would be a good career? 
would you be inclined to steer them that way or steer them in a different direction? No, I definitely would steer them toward being a lawyer. I think it's an honorable profession, a much-needed profession. I think uh, they would enjoy doing, helping people, which lawyers basically do. So I definitely would encourage them to uh, to go to law school. Okay, okay. Uh, anybody going to watch in this video, have you got any words of wisdom for them as far as once they get out of law school, whether they ought to try to go into private practice, go to work in a DA's office, public defender, the government? Mm -hmm. Any thoughts on that? I, To me, I had a chance uh, originally to go to work for a company. And uh, matter of fact, uh, they offered me $275 a month. Pretty big pay, you know. And Truman, in the practice, offered me 250 And I thought about it for a long time, and I decided that I probably never would be satisfied if I didn't try the private practice. So that's what I did, and I've not, never regretted it. I kind of think my advice to them would be to get into the private practice. The corporation is pretty limited. Uh, district attorney, uh, pub, the public defenders, that might be some good experience if they want to start as a public defender. We have some guys here in the office that did that. Uh, uh, government, I'd say no. But, but bottom line, I think, I think the private practice would be my advice. Okay. And even here in Roswell, we, we had a lot of lawyers, but I think there's spots. Uh, you always hear about some firm. Like I say, we just took on two new lawyers, one from Baylor and one from Texas Tech. And I know uh, the other firms are hiring, so it's still there's still spots for people. Now, you know, as a thought, you know, I was telling someone the other day, when I went through high school, uh, I took Latin because in those days they thought if you wanted to be a lawyer, you had to learn Latin. Well, I wish I'd taken Spanish. And instead, <laughs> that Latin was, you know, no, that's well, nothing. Well, you don't hear any of the Latin terms mm -hmm. anymore, mm -hmm. that's for sure. You know, you mm -hmm. used to hear them years ago, and I'm sure you heard them in law school. I oh, know yeah, I did. Yeah. But, but that uh, seems to be a thing of the past. Yeah, so. I wish I'd taken Spanish. I notice you got some library in here. Do, do you, do your folks, I'm sure now they've got everything on disc and yeah. you're really not buying books anymore. No, we've, we've phased out. I say we, I don't, I'm not involved in the buying or anything like management and whatnot. But uh, we've phased out quite a few of the books. I think we still get the New Mexico reporters and maybe one other uh, book, set of books. But uh, it's all, most everything on the computer. Well, I noticed looking over here on your shelf, you've got like the 41 statutes and the session laws that go clear back into the 1800s. Mm -hmm. I assume you had to inherit a lot of that from Truman Sanders. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm sure that old, old, old stuff uh, was long in Truman's. Okay. And, uh, gosh, we've. You know, we've had some stuff we've just discarded, but none of none of the stuff going back that that far. Why did you quit practicing law? Oh, I just I just kind of felt like that after 50 years, uh, that was enough, and I uh, didn't have any any plans, but uh, I just figured it. Uh, it was it was getting to where I was. It was pretty repetitive stuff. Uh, and, you know, it wasn't particularly exciting, whatnot. I uh, had some nice clients, did a lot of work for this Pioneer Bank, uh, but uh, it just kind of seemed like to me that uh, it was time to, to hang it up. Uh, my wife and I had always traveled quite a bit, but didn't necessarily quit for that reason. But uh, it just seemed like it was time to move on. I would think you'd had a hard time having your old-time clients getting them shuffled off to somebody else. Well, uh, it, it, it hasn't been a problem. Uh, of course, a lot, 
a lot of them pass on. <laughs> and, but uh, I've been able to, uh, uh, particularly the, the banks, it was easy to pass them on to someone else. And client calls and wants a will, why, well, you know, it's easy to find somebody that can take care of that. But uh, no, it, it was relatively easy. Well, Jim, it's been real nice. I, I've thoroughly enjoyed this because, like I say, I know you and I uh, spent a fair amount of time together back when we were on the Board of Bar Commissioners mm -hmm. together. And, it was uh, a good time. And good we time. had some good times together, mm -hmm. and uh, I, uh, I I miss those times, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's been a real pleasure being able to sit down well, and visit thank with you. Well, thank you. After you were on the Bar Commission, weren't you the head of a couple of other organizations, uh, Western Bar. Yeah, or, I ended yeah. up, I, I got real involved with the Western States Bar Conference and ended up being president of that one year. And that, I, that we, all, we all figured you wanted to be a, in perpetuity a president of something, so, <laughs> you know, we just let it go with that. Well, so. I could tell you a story, but I won't put it on this No, this no, tape. okay, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for coming down and uh, I enjoyed it too, and so it's good to see you. Yeah, and we'll we'll stay in touch. Oh, you bet. Thank okay. you. Thank nice you very much. Nice to see much. you. Thank okay. you. Okay.